Good evening, explorers, and welcome to the zone. Hello there, fellow men and women of the world. Are you tired of living out your boring, mundane lives in relative comfort? Do you crave excitement, adventure, and a fine piece of supernatural land? Then say hello to Pachorsk. This lovely town has it all. Breathtaking views! <coughs> <laughs> Friendly locals, and the freshest food your tongue has ever tasted. That not convincing for you? Let's ask one of our local residents. For the last fucking time, I am not helping you sell real estate. Leave me the fuck. You know what? You asked for this where we're going to be taking a deep dive into the Pechorsk Exclusion Zone and what lies within it. Today, we're looking at the first region that explorers have access to, Pervame Route. Let's get into it. Pervame being the first area accessible outside the gates of Vano, by far has the lightest resistance. You can expect fragments, phantoms, spawns, and police mimics at the very worst. Bear in mind that other types of entities are encounterable here if you are doing terminal given missions, especially at higher security levels. So always survey mission objectives beforehand so you don't get any nasty surprises. Pervame consists of a lot of hills and cliffside paths, with a no man's land in the middle. The terrain can be very advantageous in gunfights, but there is little opportunity to do so due to lack of mimics. First, let's talk about the major points of interest. For the purpose of this series, I'm classifying any location that contains a rift as a major point of interest or major POI. In Pervame, there are three, and we will start with the Motor Depot. The Motor Depot is lightly defended, only containing a handful of fragments, spawns, and usually a single police mimic. Entering can be done through these three entrances, although I prefer this one since it usually gets me right up close with the police mimic guarding the place. This is a mission critical location, meaning you will have to go here to progress through the game. It's associated with the Total Recall quest, where you must retrieve a roll of film from this office building in the depot. These buildings have a lot of black grass, so be careful. Fun fact, but you can actually grab the film through the window right off the desk, which can speed up the quest a bit. The rift can be located in either one of these two warehouses or this dilapidated building. Also, if you're wondering about loot, don't worry, that'll come up in a later dedicated loot section. Moving on, we have the central office. It is lightly defended by much of the same. Fragments, spawns, and a single police mimic. Although there is a second police mimic patrolling nearby that will likely hear the gunfire and come for you. The area has a thick spread of distortion anomalies to its northeast, but other than that, it's free of anomalies. The police mimic spawns on the roof, so you can either shoot him from afar... ...or peek from the ladder. The rift can be located on any of the floors, including the roof. Lastly, we have the Pervome train yard. It has some slightly beefier resistance, but only in numbers, containing at least three police mimics, as well as quite a few fragments and spawns. Fortunately though, the train yard is free of anomalies and has an abundance of cover. If your aim is on point, then you can easily approach from the cliffside and shoot down onto the mimics. Otherwise, you can also enter from the northwest, where there's lots of cover and you can engage from a comfortable mid to close range. The rifts can be located by this open train car, in this small shack, or in this storage warehouse. There's also plenty of loose loot and buildings to scavenge. I also wanted to mention the block post, as technically it does not contain a rift, but it is a mission critical location. That mission being the first expedition. It only contains two fragments and some basic supplies besides that. Now moving on to anomalies. Like with the POIs, I'm categorizing them into major anomaly fields and minor anomaly fields. Pervame Route has one major anomaly, that being Constellation, just southeast of the Motor Depot. It contains primarily gas and reflector anomalies, so a gas mask is recommended, although technically you don't need one if you're quick enough, but you will still take a good bit of damage. 
As far as artifacts go, you can get blanks, steps, night eyes, and most importantly, this is the earliest that you can get your hands on regen artifacts, so it's always worth checking in my opinion. Now we're going to look at minor anomaly fields, which are more generic locations and all have the same artifacts based on region. For Pervame, you can only get blanks and steps artifacts. There are four in total. One in the no man's land just north of the block post, one on top of the hill north of the Vano entrance, one just outside the entrance of Pobeta Factory, and one at the intersection just northwest of the Motor Depot. All of these are a mix of distortion and reflector anomalies. Even though the artifacts aren't great, you can get six of them in total in a single tide, netting you between 1200 to 1600. Finally, we are moving on to the loot section. Let's start with the stash locations. These stashes have guaranteed loot, but are only obtainable once. Stash number one is located in the forest just northeast of the train yard inside a concrete pipe. It contains a TT-33 Tokarev pistol equipped with a threaded barrel, two magazines, two boxes of 7.62x25 ammo, and a pistol suppressor. I highly recommend getting this stash immediately at the start of the game as it's a big upgrade from the Makarov. Stash number two is located just south of the central office inside a UAS truck. It contains two boxes of 9x18 ammo, 7.62x25, and 12 gauge. Stash number three is located at the motor depot on top of these fuel tanks. You can climb up on the awning and drop down onto it. It contains a Glock in poor condition, a magazine, and a box of 9x19 ammunition. Now onto the crate based loot. I would like to put a disclaimer here. There does appear to be some differences with loot crate spawns between the Quest version and the PC version. I play PC exclusively, so if I miss a crate that you have most certainly seen, it may be because of that. Also bear in mind that loot crate spawn locations have switched around a lot over time, especially in the most recent updates. That being said, I am only showcasing locations that I can verify in the most recent version of the game. Anyway, there are two types of crates. We will start with the wooden ones. Wood crates in Pervame can contain 7.62x25 boxes, 9x18 boxes, 12 gauge boxes, healing stems, photo traps, weather monitors, RGD2 grenades, and RGD5 grenades. They have a chance of spawning in the following locations. On this table in the block post, in this small shack on the cliffside, in this forest east of said shack, by this overturned truck, inside the western warehouse and motor depot, inside the northeast safe house, on top of the central office roof and just down below it, on the northern side of the train yard in this small building, one under this train platform, inside this small house, on top of the overpass, and inside of the southwest safe house. As for metal crates, you can get a variety of goods from them. We will start with the guns. You can potentially get a TT-33, an IZH-27, both long and short, and a short PPSH. You can get mags for the TT-33, the GSH-18, PP-91 short mags, and PPSH sticks. You can get boxes of 9x18, 7.62x25, and 12 gauge buckshot ammunition. They spawn in the following locations. On this car near the Popetta entrance, inside of the Eastern Warehouse in the Motor Depot, on the second story in the Central Office Building, inside of the Warehouse in the Rail Yard, and on the third floor of the Rail Yard Office Building. There is also one that spawns up on the Motor Depot awning, but only on Quest. One thing to bear in mind is that Into the Radius is chocked full of set spawns for things like treasure items, ammunition, magazines, and other goods some of which are tucked away in unexpected places, so if you want to maximize your loot gains, you're going to have to get down and dirty scavenging around. Overall, Pervome is a quaint little beginning to your grand excursion into Pechorsk. Low risk, low reward, but quite relaxing once you get over the fragment moans. As we get further along into the series, I will go a bit deeper into tips and tactics, especially for harder points of interest. Until next time, explorers.